Welcome back to our Wodang Academy channel. We go through the Zhang Zhang practice, which is a very important practice for our daily routine, because it is the only exercise that efficiently cultivates the Qing essence. In this video, we will go through the theory and the practice how we cultivate the Qing with a Zhang Zhang Nei Gong. So let's start. So when we practice Zhang Zhang, the most important part is that we find the right point for our gravity center. For accordance, we try to stand straight, all right? Try to stand as straight as possible. And to get a feeling for your gravity center point, try to shift all your gravity center to the toes for a second, and then go back to the heel, yes? But try to keep your hip inside during this shifting process, because it will, um, it will change the feeling of your gravity point. So keep the hip inside, and now to the toes, and back to the heel. And now try 50-50 in between with a very small slight pressure forward. So a little bit over 50-50% towards the toes, but not too much. And this is exactly where we're feeling the tension of the position through the body, when the body is relaxed. So now we will start fixing the proportions of your stance one by one. The most important part of your Zhang Zhuang position is the stretching of the spine to be able to stimulate the circulation through the body because the, the Qi circulation should rise upwards when you're breathing down and stay relaxed. So uh, what's important is that you try to figure out your right hip position. When you step the hip, hip out like this, yes, then you're blocking the spine and the lower back here becomes hard too. And if you're pushing the hip too much inside, then you have a similar uh, thing like curving the spine too much. This is not normal, right? Try to relax your hip and the hip then should naturally fall slightly inside. But the thing is, uh, sometimes if uh, beginners are unflexible, it can be that they are unable to do so because out of habit. Most people have always the hip out and then the whole body is too strong, too stiff. So to be able to help you with that, you can go slightly into your knees a bit lower and then you will be able to bring the hip more inside. Yes, It can also be that you need to be able to push the hip a bit more inside to achieve the right position. If you have that, then you should do some stretching. Yeah. Do some stretching right now, uh, knee stretching and try hip stretching uh, to become more flexible and it will make your Zhang Zhang position a lot easier, okay? So when we found the right hip position, the hip slightly inside, the knee also not too straight but slightly in, yes? If you're too hard, you need probably more in with your knees to achieve the straight position into your hip. But now the hip is slightly inside and this is where the spine has the first anchor point, right? Then the second anchor point is right through here at the chest high. The chest high anchor point here is controlling your shoulder position. This is where the shoulders are curved like a bow. Huh? They are slightly curved. When you relax the arms, they are here in a round shape, yes? If you push them outward too much, then you're overstretching the chest here. And when you're going here too much, you're overstretching the upper back here. So uh, try to relax. And when the body is naturally in the right gravity center position, the shoulders normally naturally fall slightly forward in a curved bow position. So uh, like, like we explained before, the position of your gravity center is crucial to find the right shoulder position. When you have the right shoulder position, then the body, the upper back and the lower back can truly relax. So for now we know the three rules. Control gravity center. Control hip position. Make lower body relax. Control chest point. Make sure the shoulders rest on the chest point and let the shoulders go. Then they have naturally curved position and the upper back uh, can relax too. So now let's go through the hand wrist and the finger position. Yes, the hand wrist also shouldn't be straight. This is a common mistake that people have when they start with Zhang Zhuang. Also shouldn't be like so. Yeah? If the angle of your hand wrist is too high, you are unable to have a good circulation through the fingers. 
And the whole point of the Tsang Chuang practice is to stimulate the circulation through the whole body. So after some time we can cultivate the Qi. So first we need to make sure that the Qi goes through all uh, circulations. We have one major circulation and one minor circulation. The minor, the small circulation, will go through all parts in the body where usually the Qi cannot go through. And this is why we need to open all joints. And the hand wrist should be in a round shape, not too much tension, not too much tension in both sides. So like this, the hand wrist is usually naturally round, right? And this is where the Qi can go through more easier. Beginners often have this problem that the hand wrist is closed. You can do some stretching like this to open your hand wrist. Make sure you hold the thumb and all fingers and push them towards like this. This way you can stretch the hand wrist. So now let's go through the finger positions. The fingers shouldn't be closed and shouldn't be spread open too wide. They should be in a natural round angle. But also, look here, they shouldn't be straight and shouldn't be too much inside either. So how do we find the right finger position? What's important is first you push outside as, as, as much as you can. Push outside very, very strong. And then you find a relaxation point when you go very slowly in a softer stance that you find the finger vibrating in every tip. So this should be around here, right? When all is in round shape, you will feel all fingertips slightly vibrating when you focus on that. When you curve it, it disappears naturally. Yeah? So keep this in mind. Also here, stretching will help if you have always trouble with the fingers because of, uh, of, of health problems. Some people have that when they do hard work that they cannot really stretch the fingers, right? But also here, you can help stretching your fingers to be able to uh, improve your circulation here. So uh, let's, let's keep in mind for now that the hand wrist is uh, most important to achieve a good finger circulation and when you have that you should try to uh, correct your fingers. This probably will take some time because uh, from my experience um, most uh, new students always have wrong finger position and it really takes some time to get used to it. So now we have uh, one more important focus point besides the posture. It is the neck. So to be able to open the spine here, uh, you need to uh, focus on the ear and the chin. Uh, the ear and the chin should be at a 90 degree angle. Yes. So let me take a look. You can see here that from the ear, it goes straight down towards the chin. This 90 degree angle is stretching the neck here. So if you have a friend, he can check your neck position or if you take a look into the mirror or make a recording of yourself with your smartphone, you should probably check if your chin and ear are really at a straight 90 degree angle to be able to achieve the stretching. Uh, most people have this smartphone syndrome where the neck is always forward and this is what can really help you, right? Because the neck position uh, will make you able to relax the shoulders. If your shoulders are too hard, then it's probably because of this. So one more important part, actually two more important parts, is the embracing position. Uh, in the Tsang Tsuang, you have this round shape position, right? And the first uh, point, what is really important, is the position of your elbow. Uh, uh, when you when you have a hand on your shoulder and you raise the elbow, you will feel that your shoulder cramps up and becomes hard. So the elbow is a very good indicator that you can truly relax your shoulders. The elbow should look straight down to the ground. And in this position, you should uh, try to imagine that you embrace somebody. Yes, you have a bow position. And during the bow position, the upper back is naturally stretching slightly. Uh, you, you have this slight stretched upper back, you see here, like embracing, and then the upper back open, uh, opens here, and relax the shoulders. And the elbow 
looks down. In the Zhang Zhuang, we also have a half-closed eye position because to enhance our focus. Uh, the Taoists say if we fully close our eyes, then we probably fall asleep. So the half-open eyes will help you to stay focused and not fall asleep. So try to relax your eyelids and then you have a natural uh, half position of your eyelids and you need to try to relax your eyes to remain calm here. If the eyelid is flickering, then you're not truly relaxed. Try again, relax the eyelids, breathe slowly and go into your Zhang Zhang practice. So it is important in your Zhang Zhang practice that you look for a place where you're not distracted by other things, where you can truly be with yourself and then try to focus on your breathing alone. Try to breathe in slowly, six to eight seconds, and six to eight seconds out. Only uh, focus on a relaxed position, like I explained before, and don't think about anything else. For new students, it is very good that you just try focus on breathing. So only try to um, actively uh, think about breathing in, think about breathing out, and then eventually you don't do it anymore and you uh, get focused and stay empty in your mind. This is the achievement that you should try to do. And also the Zhang Zhuang should remain at least 15 minutes to have an effect. Because in this uh, calm stance, uh, the, the brain activates a kind of sleeping mode that will then start cultivating the Qing essence. It's, it's a lot more complex, but now for this video, uh, this is important to know. Okay, so as we told you, uh, when you try to practice Zhang Zhuang, try to start with 15 minutes, try to get used to those 15 minutes for maybe two, three months. It might uh, happen to you that your shoulders hurt a lot, that your spine hurts at certain points, that your knees hurt. Trust the process, it will go away. It really will. And after some time, try to increase your timing, like to go from 15 to 30 minutes. And after a few more months, try to go to 45 minutes. Um, there's not really much we can say about it. You will feel it and you will experience it. And I, would, I would actually recommend to do it for around three months. Try to stay at a 15 minutes time frame. And after these three months, try, try to go for 30 minutes. And uh, I think after then, you, you try practicing it for half a year, then you feel the improvement. At, at some point, you, you will be able to choose the time frame for your own, for yourself, because you're feeling what is really effective and what time frame you really need. The Zhang Zhuang is a an, um, is an flexible practice, but for new students, it is important that you fix the time frame to be able to uh, shut off the internal conflict with your mind and really be able to relax and go into the practice. Later on, you will not have this conflict anymore and you can freely stand Zhang Zhuang how long and however you like. So I hope this video was helpful for everybody. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye. See you soon.